Hi, everyone. Welcome to the, uh, the last talk of the, uh, this session. Uh, this will be Daniel Holmes talking about using R to produce clinical reports in, in, patient, in patient records. Thanks very much for the introduction. It's thank you to Stefan um, Kadaki for inviting me to speak today. I'm going to be picking up on some of the things uh, that Stephen Master spoke about earlier and uh, maybe make allusion to uh, what Patrick Mathias will be speaking about later on. I'm going to talk about how we use R to produce clinical reports in specific to specific reference to a condition called primary aldosteronism, where R plays a role in the entire data automation and reporting pipeline. So what is primary aldosteronism? It is the most common form of cure, curable form of hypertension. Most hypertension doesn't have a well-defined cause, and so it's just treated with medications. The primary aldosteronism is, um, is, has a specific underlying cause. It can, it can either be from excessive growth of uh, the adrenal glands, or it can be due to a tumor of the adrenal gland, usually on one side and occasionally on both sides. When it's caused by a tumor and it's uh, only on one side, you can just take that tumor out with an adrenalectomy. Otherwise, uh, you can use medications that are specifically targeted to block the effect of aldosterone. Um, and this causes people to have a chronic hypertension that's particularly resistant to medication and uh, to have low potassium. So these patients have specific clinical features that will help identify them as uh, possibly having primary aldosteronism. They tend to be resistant to the usual medications like ACE inhibitors and beta blockers. Um, they tend to present uh, with, uh, with, with an incidentally discovered adrenal mass. And medicine is notorious for having unusual nomenclature. We call these incidentalomas. They're discovered incidentally on CT scan. Um, hypertension in a young person or hypokalemia um, that is low blood potassium in response to the, uh, the normally employed um, diuretic medications. So biochemical screening is undertaken with the concomitant measurement of aldosterone and plasma renin activity. Um, and in allusion to what Stephen spoke about earlier, these two um, measurements are notorious for high variability between the vendors who manufacture the kits to measure them. And so the thresholds for diagnosis and screening are, are heavily linked to the analytical methodology that you're using, whether that be a lab developed test or a commercially available kit. In any case, clinicians being what they are, they need something simple. So the, the combined information of aldosterone and plasma renin activity is taken by means of a ratio of those two, and that is what people usually use to help screen for primary aldosteronism. This is a, um, an illustration of the so-called renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system, and um, not terribly important uh, to us except to say that the target analyte for measuring plasma renin activity is the ability to generate angiotensin 1 over a period of time. So there's endogenous angiotensinogen, and we measure how much angiotensin 1 is generated over a period of time buffered at uh, pH 6.5. And then, of course, we measure aldosterone itself, and this is just an illustration of aldosterone's actions, which are to retain potassium and to waste water. If you think about that, if the water has to, sorry, retain sodium and waste potassium is what I meant to say. When you retain sodium, uh, water has to come with it, and it causes the intravascular volume to expand and causes the high blood pressure. So... Um, these data are generated off a mass spectrometer, as I'll show you in, in a moment, using a lab-developed test. And our data workflow strategy when we started out was to manually transcribe them, which is one of you know my beefs is that we spend a lot of time trying to make perfect analytical chemistry, and then we manually transcribe the results into our lab systems. So that doesn't make a lot of sense, and we were manually adding our interpretive comments also. Uh, which often are, are canned or uh, just stock comments. So here's the analytical and data workflow that we developed. The patient sample is taken, uh, well, first, actually, it's, uh, it's uh, taken to this liquid handling robot from Hamilton. It's subjected to a number of uh, treatments for aldosterone. It's extracted with uh, methyl tert ether that is dried down 
reconstituted and um and then uh thank you citrix for telling me that i need to update you can bounce there in the right hand corner <laughs> for a few minutes um and uh then after the extraction the methyl butyl ether is dried off and and the uh the sample reconstituted methanol water and then we can measure aldosterone uh, using a multiplexed um, hplc system connect to a psiX mass spectrometer to get uh patient identifiers well it's actually just the the barcode that's on the tube which isn't a patient identifier it's a sample identifier but to get it across we use r to just do some uh, some data munging it's sh through a shared folder ends up over um, at the mass spectrometer and then again ascii text output comes from the mass spectrometer but we can't interpret those results by themselves we need to marry them with the clinical data, which is not on the uh, patient barcode identifier. So in order to marry it with the clinical data, we have to get that clinical data out. Now, at the time that I developed this workflow, um, data innovations, which is appearing down here, was not available. And so, um, uh, and, and the lab information system people did not want to help me with this because they were stretched with other things. So I discovered this language expect which uh, I used to strip information directly through um, a text interface to the lab system. This is all run by Bash um, uh, under Ubuntu. Uh, and using that, we uh, get data from the laboratory information system, which is SunQuest. We marry that clinical data, produce an Excel file, I know it's shameful, and um, the Excel file is used uh, to, to uh, review the interpretive comments that have been auto-generated. And then a flat file is sent over to Data Innovations and then goes to SunQuest and to the electronic health record. Um, so I would just like to talk a little bit about Expect because it is kind of a, a hack that is useful in certain circumstances. It's, a, it's an automation language for text-based interfaces. We were not permitted to have uh, an ODBC connection to the lab information system. And so because we had a text command line um, interaction with the lab information system, we could use, we could automate that interaction and get the information from the text file that gets dumped. So expect is an extension of the TCL language that is you know, used for, uh, for automating any kind of um, text uh, command line interaction. Um, there's alternatives to this in, um, in the modern era um, using a specific automation languages. Uh, but uh, since we are working on a Mac OS and Linux, uh, we, didn't have, uh, we didn't have the benefit of auto hotkey, which is a good example. Uh, there, is no, um, there is no extension of R that lets you use expect. So these are having to be run by uh, daughter processes, but there is a, a Python extension uh, that will allow you to imitate the expect language. This is the interpretive process that is applied to our samples. In the middle, we have mostly normal people. These patients with a high aldosterone to plasma renin activity are uh, considered um, a positive screen for primary aldosteronism. We have an indeterminate screen in the orange. We have other conditions where you have high aldosterone and high plasma renin, renin activity, such as renal artery stenosis, renanoma, uh, laxative abuse, et cetera. Uh, we have medication effects, um, Addison's disease, that is to have low adrenal activity. Um, and uh, at the pink domain is sort of like prolonged recumbence, that is patients in hospital or something like that. Um, and uh, a couple of other um, uh, in miscellaneous categories, but this is the interpretive algorithm that is applied by the R script from uh, from the mass spectrometer, uh, uniting it with the uh, clinical data. So R has permitted us to find some other conditions too. We found a number of cases of ACTH dependent Cushing syndrome caused by ectopic uh, carcinoid syndrome, carcinoid tumors. We found lots of Addison's disease. We found inappropriate dexamethasone administration before primary aldosteronism screening that just happened yesterday, for example. Uh, we have a few opportunities for improvement. Um, I've been using TCL widgets because this was developed before Shiny existed. So we could move this whole thing to a Shiny interface and we could incorporate, incorporate more mass spectrometry quality metrics in the reporting. Um, and it would be nice to have full automation of some of the interpretive letters that we need to write for the uh, tumor localization procedures, which I haven't had a chance to talk about here.
I would like to acknowledge uh, people that helped me tirelessly, Grace Vandergoogton, who does all our mass spectrometry uh, assay development, and uh, MSACL for promoting applications of R and Python to mass spectrometry, and of course, our laboratory uh, technologists who make this possible. Also, Dr. Janet Simons and Dr. Andre Matman, who are my user base. We are a user base of three for this, um, but they provide me important feedback on how to improve the process. and. Um, and I appreciate that very much. And with that, I will, uh, I'll, I'll stop. And I will tell Citrix to remind me later. <laughs> Thanks very much, Daniel. If you have questions for Daniel, uh, you're welcome to, to contact him. Uh, at this point, we're gonna start the, bird, uh, the birds of a feather for today. Thank you very much. Thanks.